Back in the 60s, there were a lot of kids shows on TV. The hosts typically played friendly policemen, sea captains, and firemen, and introduced cartoons, or 10-minute Three Stooges movies. But one of these hosts stood out above the rest. Esquire magazine's front-page story called Fred Rogers, A National Hero. Welcome to Wait Till You Hear This. I'm Steve Eastman. Hey, Mr. Rogers. It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood, a beautiful day for a neighbor. Please won't you be my neighbor. That was wonderful. Hard-nosed investigative reporter Lloyd Vogel was given the assignment of writing a 400-word article on Mr. Rogers. Think of it as a little more than an oversized caption to go with a beloved personality's picture. Not Vogel's specialty, but his fault-finding approach had turned off so many people that Rogers was the only celebrity nice enough at the time to agree to an interview. Arriving at the studios of WQED in Pittsburgh, the journalist found Mr. Rogers good-naturedly holding up production while he befriended a young fan who needed an oxygen line to breathe. How often did this happen? Vogel was told, every day. An investigative journalist likes to tear off the mask from a respected celebrity to show what he or she is really like, in contrast to their image. Vogel found that impossible with Rogers. The TV character and the man doing the hosting were one and the same. He really couldn't call it acting. He considered the place between the TV set and the viewer sacred space, and was his delight to relate to the child in his imagination watching the show. How did Rogers take to Vogel's tough questions? He thanked him for his candidness. The interviewer became the interviewee. From the very beginning, as Fred Rogers tried to understand and appreciate his new friend, it became a mentoring type of relationship, with a children's host keeping in touch with a journalist long after their initial meeting, and with Vogel hungering to comprehend the other man's outlook. Kudos to Tom Hanks, who learned to walk in Fred Rogers' shoes so perfectly, and actor Matthew Rice, who played Vogel, based on real-life journalist Tom Junod, well, let's just say we can see the imaginary gears turning in his head as his character was thinking. Another nice touch was a miniature village from the neighborhood of make-believe. It looked better than the TV version. Now it mirrored the neighborhood of Pittsburgh, complete with landmarks. So what became of Vogel's article? It turned out Can You Say Hero was 9,600 words too long, but his editor did not mind. In fact, she was delighted. A Beautiful Day in the Neighborhood premieres on Friday, November 22nd. It's a good reminder of what's really important as we enter the busy holiday season. This is Steve Eastman for Wait Till You Hear This. Discover more stories like this one on our website, waittillyouhearthis.com.